did you leave uh, uh this is Rowan and I need to find my cheat sheet but I figured it's been a few days since I've put up a new video oh my gosh and uh, while I do intend to um, do that oh shit what's in here uh, do that book review that is so overdue. I finished that book in February. Why am I this far behind? Oh, these things. Um, little sticky tabs. Speaking of book reviews, right? Um, so far behind. I finished that book around the end of February, and it is the middle of May. So, <laughs> I am very far behind with doing that book review. In fact, uh, there's a second book in the, uh, in the series that... I, uh, well, actually, like, at this point, I'm at, like, what, the seventh book in the series? Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's another book in the series that I also finished reading and need to review. So I'm two reviews behind, and I don't know. I'm just gonna blame the fact that my meds only got a long overdue adjustment, uh, technically yesterday... Um, in terms of where the, um, in terms of when the prescription, uh, got written and filled, but, um, uh, it, I don't know, I'm kind of funny about, um, refilling my, uh, my pill pods here. Actually, you know, I'm down, oh, wait, no, that's, okay, so, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, ugh. uh, whatever, I'll find the, uh, the other one. In fact, like, there's, a. Uh, there's uh, the, uh, the boost bar that uh, I didn't even get that into my pill pod, so I've just been adding this manually every day. I don't know why. I, I don't know. It's, like I said, I just finally got my meds adjusted. It's officially starting tomorrow morning, so uh, I'm so backed up on orders from my shop as well. Again, I know it's, I know it's, it, it just feels like a BS excuse to a lot of people, but, um, you know, even my, uh, even my, uh, psychiatrist, she noticed that I am getting easily distracted again, and, um, what's that thing called? Uh, procrastinating to high heavens, and I told her, hun, you don't know the half of it. So, um, so yeah, I know it's like, it feels like a cop-out sometimes. It definitely feels like one to me at this point, but the orders are being filled. Uh, at least I'm putting together um, some packages for it tonight, and I can't find my exacto, which is not good with cats here, but um, they are smart cats, relatively speaking, and hopefully they know. Actually, um, Phoebe tried eating some embroidery floss last night, and, uh, thankfully she puked it back up, so I don't have to worry about getting her, you know, like, I don't have to worry about it getting caught in her intestines and, um, and all of that, so... <laughs> uh, but, uh, speaking of cats, I thought I would add a twist to this, um... Uh, mailbox video, just, you know, for the sake of doing a quick, stupid-ass video, I'm gonna do a mailbox one, because I've got a couple of packages. <laughs> uh, so yeah, how about I answer some questions that nobody has asked me recently, if ever. So, by the way, this was, a this was, um, an eBay purchase. Um, Oh my gosh. Oh, I love it when they include handwritten notes. Like, I mean, I include handwritten notes when people buy shit from me. Um, so, uh, so yeah, this was, a uh, Vintage Sheet Music, 5'2", Eyes of Blue, 1925, um, by, uh, uh, the, uh, surnames are Louis Young and, uh, Henderson. So, uh, um, Ruin, oh my gosh, and he even added the fada over the A. I, I don't think, I don't think, uh, they know that it's Gaelic, but, um, uh, thank you for your purchase. Thank you for your purchase. I hope you enjoy your new, in dick quotes, uh, music and come back again. 
uh, sometime if you have any problems with your purchase please uh, reach out to me so that I may make amends to you. Thanks again, Rowan. Uh, sincerely, I'm going to read this here. Um, Jean Graves and a uh, little happy face. I love it when they include handwritten notes because it's like saying that, you know, hi, this is a person that you bought this from. Uh, so yeah, it, like, I mean, like, I know that eBay is basically the internet's yard sale, um, or at least the one where, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, I never have the camera on the cats when they're doing the cutest or silliest things. Uh, your music has been maintained and shipped in an acid-free archival quality slipcover with a buffered backboard. If you keep your sheet music away from direct sunlight, moisture, excessive heat, cold, and airborne contaminant, contaminants, yeah, contaminants, uh, then your collectible could last for many long, enjoyable years ahead. Thank you for your purchase. And, uh, okay, so this is just like a little bit of a form letter kind of thing. Oh, and, uh, scraps music. That's, that's where you can find them on eBay. Let's, uh, let's do quick here. It's odd, so the camera function seems to have turned itself off, but it then, uh, it then had a, um, it did, it did save. Okay, that's a thing that happens, I suppose. So the right number of cats to have, I would say, is three. Um, most of the time where I've had more than one cat, I have had three cats. And... Oh, 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 oh. Phoebe and Murnau are chasing. <laughs> I would say three is the right number. Oh, now now you'll get bulbed. <laughs> uh, I would say the right number of cats to have is three, and I would say the ideal arrangement as far as um, sex and ages go. Um, I would say that you definitely want to have. Um, uh, I would say the, the per, my preferred arrangement of ages and sex is um, you want at least um, a, f uh, a four year age gap um, between um, between a minimum of two of them. So so right now I have two seven year olds or at least they're due to be seven. Let's see. We estimated Nigel's birthday to be. Um, late May, maybe early June of 2012, and Phoebe's was estimated by her old foster to be um, April or June of 2012. Whereas Murnau, we know he was born um, April of 2017, so he's going to be two. And so I have two seven-year-olds and a two-year-old, and... Um, and I didn't intend to have two seven-year-olds. Um, <laughs> that's just how it worked out. And I just fell in love with Phoebe when I saw her at the adoption event. Um, she she was kind of stressed out from all the chaos in the situation, but you know she was responsive when I was talking to her, and she leaned into my hand when I you know reached over and gave her scritchins. So you know she, I could I could tell she was a perfectly friendly cat. She just doesn't like chaos. And that's understandable. Very few people, very few people do. Like we can assume that there are cats who do not adjust well to it. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I would say like a minimum of two. You want at least a four-year age gap between them. And we've got um, two seven-year-olds and a two-year-old. So there's a five-year age gap between a minimum of two of them. And my preferred arrangement, as far as sex goes, is two males and a female. And, um, though the, um, though the, uh, the, um, one arrangement of three that I lived with the longest, I would say, and that's just because, um, that's just because, um, I was, uh, living with that ex, um, <laughs> long after we'd broken up. It was, it was one of those things where we both wanted something completely different out of, out of our lives, and, um... And we figured, you know, might as well end it while we're still friends and can still stand the sight of each other. <laughs> and, you know, and it's one of those things where if 
you know, we had we had um, we had off and on for about five years, and we raised three cats together, and uh, and you know, if you can't stay friends after that, then it's because at least one of you has screwed up royally. But then what happens? Oh, right, cats. So um, so yeah, when I was living with uh with with uh with Scott, um, our three cats were his old cat that he literally had since college. This cat died at the age of 20. That is Fat Bob. There are people who still tell stories about Fat Bob at parties. <laughs> this is seriously true. Um, I've got a few Fat Bob stories that I should probably share at some point. And I definitely have a few pictures of Fat Bob left, but most of them are on a hard drive that Nigel borked up to the point where it needs clean room recovery. That's $1,500. I don't have $1,500, but I'm still holding on to this hard drive, hoping maybe one of these days I might have the $1,500 to, to, uh, to get everything in their clean room recovered, because there are pictures in there of cats who have died, and the reason that it is not on my OneDrive, um, my cloud service, is because I have so many pictures that I was... I had to upload it in batches, like I tried to upload it all at once, and that failed, and so I tried to upload it in batches, and then Windows um, did this update, and because I was unmedicated for the ADHD at the time, I never got back around to, um, to uploading the batches at that point, and while I'm technically medicated right now, I just had it adjusted, so that's why my thoughts are all over the place right now. So. Um, so yeah, uh, there was Scott's cat, Fat Bob, and, um, and then there was my cat, Vermin, and Vermin actually was not a black cat. Vermin was a, uh, Vermin was, uh, her pattern is called, uh, Tabby Torty, where she's, uh, tortoiseshell and white, if you're in the UK, or, um, at least, um, certain parts of Europe, probably, uh, I think Torty is the, uh, is the preferred um, or torty and white is the preferred uh, term in Australia and New Zealand as well. Um, so, uh, or uh, calico if you're in the U.S. and Canada. So like um, um, uh, black, red, or orange, and um, and white. So black, orange, and white. So of course she was female. And some of her patches were tabby patches. Uh, she was beautiful, beautiful coloring, and I just fell in love with her, and that was one of those deals where I just fell in love with her. Just like, I didn't really intend to have three black cats. Nigel, um, there's a video, I did a video, uh, um, where we meet the cats, oh god, well over a year ago at this point, uh, but short, short version is, I got Nigel serendipitously, there's a bit of a story, but, uh, the short version is, um, he was abandoned on my old street in Lansing at approximately four months old. Um, granted, he's enormous, so it's possible he was as young as three months old. Um, but uh, but yeah, he was uh, he was abandoned on my old street in Lansing as a kitten, and I just took him in because he clearly did not know how to function outside. <laughs> <laughs> and I say this because I jokingly allowed him inside, and he made a beeline for the litter box because apparently he'd been holding it in, unaware of how to crap outside, like most cats in that situation would eventually do. Um, and Phoebe, I just, like Vermin, I just fell in love with her at an adoption event. And Murnau, Murnau is because Phoebe's old foster knew I was a sucker, and I made this joking comment about how, okay, I've got this big black cat and a little black cat, now I need a fluffy black cat to complete the set. Um, so yeah, I didn't really intend to have three black cats, it just kind of happened. Um, you can believe that or not, I don't care, so, you know, if you don't, it says more about you than it does about me at this point, but where was I going? Oh, right, cats. Um... So yeah, uh, there was Vermin, my cat Vermin, Scott's cat Fat Bob, and Vermin, at some point, we decided to get a kitten for Vermin. Long story. I might tell it someday. Um, and that is Scott's cat Chunk. And um, Chunk was a lesbian. Like, she seriously was a lesbian. Now, because Scott 
had heard from a lot of people. Now, we adopted um, Chunk as a little tiny kitten from uh, one of his co-workers had a, um, uh, either one of his own cats had accidentally gotten knocked up or um, cat had, who, you know, a pregnant queen had had kittens under his porch or something. I don't remember the whole story there, but uh, basically we adopted Chunk through a co-worker as a little tiny kitten. And it was hilarious seeing the, uh, seeing the vet at her first vet appointment. Because um, <laughs> we did it right. We did it right, you know. Um, and we took her to the vet and everything. Uh, but because Scott had heard from a lot of people that it's healthier for, um, for, uh, for, for females to have one heat cycle before you get them fixed. Like, he was, he was, in, he was insisted on waiting until she had her first heat cycle to get her fixed. Uh, I don't know how true that is about it being healthy or not, but, um, you know, as long as, uh, the male in the household, which was Fat Bob, as long as he was fixed, um, you know, that's, that's fine, you know, no kittens are gonna happen, so, um, and plus, you know, it was an apartment, and she was indoor only, nothing was gonna happen, so, um, third floor apartment, too, so if she had gotten out into the hallway, it would have taken her, <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it would have been a bit, like, hopefully somebody would have caught her before she got to the, she got to the door, so yeah, we were on the top floor, which was the third floor, but, um, but yeah, Chunk was a lesbian, and I say this, I don't say this lightly, I, I say this because, uh, because we loved our little lesbian cat, and I'm not, I'm not at all trying to insult her, I myself, being a gay man, I have many lesbian friends, I'm all about the MLM, WLW solidarity, and MLM as in man loving men, woman loving women, and all that, you know, all the solidarity with the, with the gays and the lesbians and the bisexual men and women, respectively. And, um, so, oh, right, Chunk. Um, but yeah, Chunk was having her first heat cycle, which was hilarious. <laughs> seeing this horny little cat, like, trying to rub her junk up all on everything, and she was, and of course, she went to, um, one of our adult cats to try and see if they could do something about this, and she was always shoving her junk in Vermin's face to do something about this, and remember, Vermin was a calico, or tabby torty, meaning she was female. <laughs> And Vermin would just give us this wide-eyed stare as if to say, call the police, because she had no idea what to do about this. Like, um, before Vermin ended up in Foster at, you know, an adoption, you know, little event thing, um, she had clearly had kittens at some point, so Vermin knows what this is all about, but she has no idea how to take care of it. As far as Vermin was concerned, she didn't have the right parts to take care of it. But no, Chunk was very insistent that Vermin was the one who was supposed to take care of it, which was just hilarious. And so that's why I say that, you know, Chunk was our little lesbian. And she's probably a butch lesbian, too, because, you know, she always tried to mimic Bob, <laughs> who was the male in the household. Uh, so yeah, like, that was, like, the only time that I would say that we had uh, two females and a male, and it worked. Um, every other arrangement I know with people, um, the, uh, the males tend to, or at least the most, um, the most um, comfortably cohabitating arrangement of cats, of three uh, cats, um, and when it's, when it's two males and a female, like, the female keeps the males in line. Um, when it's two females and a male, with rare exception, I've seen females, like, even spayed, even spayed females, um, will try and, like, outdo each other, it seems. Like I said, the only exception I've seen was with Chunk and Vermin, and that's because Chunk was our little butch lesbian. <laughs> so it's like, and I'm not saying that butch lesbians want to be men. That's, like, I, I've known enough lesbians, I know not to make that assumption. But I'm saying that as far as personality goes, uh, <laughs> um, you know, she, she was very diesel. She, she liked to, uh, uh, she would definitely be the, um, you know. So, um, 
This package that I'm finally going to get to after almost 20 minutes is from uh, Kimber N. So, um, uh, Cherry Berry uh, 48. I think that's a. I think that's a four. So she said she was sending me something, and I am. Please open. This is this is some tape, huh? I finally found my good um, sewing scissors, but I don't want to use my good sewing scissors on uh, on paper and tape. Oh no, got to use crappy scissors on that. <laughs> Seriously, and I can't find my exacto right now. Oh wait, I did mention that. Yeah, you, you really. If you got cats, you really should know where your exacto is, but I have relatively intelligent cats, and um, aside from Phoebe um, trying to eat but then throwing up um, embroidery floss last night, these cats are generally smart enough not to do stupid things with things that are not food. Okay. Okay. She said it was going to be wrapped in a tarot box. This is a beautiful box. Okay. Kim Kranz of the Wild Unknown. There's an ISBN number. Oh, wait. From the tarot deck. May you always be on the inner quest. Oh, the Wild Unknown Tarot. I might look that up and... Oh, we've got clove gum. Oh, crap. I can't remember. Oh, wait. For nutrition in... For nutrition info, write to... Oh, crap, 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 crap. Oh, wait. There we go. Ingredients. Uh, sugar, gum base, glucose, syrup, artificial flavor... Humectant. Oh, crap. Okay, it does have soy lecithin in it. Dang it. Does the blackjack... Do yes, it does. Son of a bitch. Yeah, that says soy and BHT. Okay, so... I am going to make a friend of mine very happy with the, uh... with the, with the retro gum that I cannot have. <laughs> Thank you so much for the gum, I guess, but like I said, I ha I, I need to give it away, so. Uh, Ron, here is a new webcam. Oh, I never used it. It I took it out of its box when I bought it to see how it worked and threw away the box. The gum is something to chew while you are stressed out. The blackjack gum is licorice and clove is clove. Ah, uh, it's not much, and I hope you are not allergic to the gum <laughs> flavors. Uh, I'm not allergic to the flavors, but I'm I'm allergic to the soy lecithin in it. Uh, and I hope you do chew gum. Uh, I love you, brother. Love your... Uh. Okay, and let's take a look at this webcam. Oh, this is a little one. Okay, so I will, I will, hmm. I definitely need to see if it will fit onto my laptop, but if it does, so let's see. Yeah, I need to see if this, okay. Okay, so it's just USB, and hopefully, 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 it's just some kind of plug-and-play deal. Okay, so it'll fit onto the laptop like that. And adjust lack of this. Uh, it looks like it's a um, Logie. Is that like a Logitech uh, thing? But uh, so yeah, it'll. Um... There we go. So something like that to uh, secure to the laptop. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully, 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 um, I can do streams this way uh, on
unfortunately, my laptop is kind of immobilized right now. For some reason, it does not recognize that there is a battery plugged into it, so it has to be plugged in. And, um, so it has to be plugged in, and then what happens is, um, the thing, the thing. Oh, oh right. So it has to be plugged in, so it's pretty much sitting on my desk, and I still need to, um, 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 uh, replace the power supply in my desktop. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, it was, um, it was, um, 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 what's that? Um, Crazy Wisdom Witches Night Out today, and so... Uh, this is how all actually things that I got like on uh, closer to the beginning of the month but this was this was actually these were actually not from crazy wisdom these are from four directions also on Main Street in Ann Arbor so I have a uh, I have a sunstone I have uh, two Labradorite. Ah, get back here. <laughs> Cats. This one's just so beautiful. And then we've got a bloodstone. And then um, from Crazy Wisdom, I picked up a black kyanite which is here, and, uh, fresh picked one. I don't know what this is, indoor decorative purpose. I don't know. What fell in here? Okay, so we've got this, uh, sacred white sage candle from, uh, Coventry Creations. And then there's, a. Uh, this other one, and... Okay, that's the black kyanite. Um, blue aragonite. And I also got two books. So, <laughs> uh, if you also follow my Instagram, I, uh, I, I posted something in the stories about this one, um, about a month ago or so, uh, the little book of cat magic, <laughs> and this is pretty much why I decided I needed this, because, okay, so there's this cat here, and then there's this cat, who is, he looks like he's up to something. He does, doesn't he? He really does. This cat is up to no good, and I don't know what he's plotting, but it's hilarious and adorable, and it does look like this book is pretty low on cringe, so that's nice, but, um, uh, and there, there are so, so many, um, so many pagan books that are so full of cringe, and I, I need to do a video about that because that is, that is, that is a thing. That is a thing. And, um, oh, right, the, um, oh, here's it, here it is. And I also, uh, now, um, this, the author, uh, Morgan, uh, Daimler, she's also on YouTube and I'm gonna put her, uh, her YouTube in the description box. Um, so I picked up this book by her, and, uh, let's see, the back says, an in-depth, uh, manual for practicing fairy witchcraft, including theology, fairy lore, rituals, holidays, and magical practices. This book aims to pick up where pagan portals, fairy witchcraft, leaves off, and teach interested people the comprehensive practice of this system of honoring the fair folk and liminal gods by blending the old fairy faith with modern paganism. 
And then we've got a couple quotes. Uh, Morgan is a blogger, poet, teacher of esoteric subjects, which druid, a dedicant of Macha, and wandering priestess of Odin, located in Connecticut, USA. And so, obviously, I am subscribed to her YouTube, so obviously, I think well enough of her that I'm not, probably not going to include this one in a, uh, in a, uh, rundown of the most cringeworthy pagan books I've ever read. So, oh my gosh, that could, that could, that could become a series. Oh gosh. Do I have the... Ah, uh, crap. Oh, that's right. Okay, so I need to get back to sorting my kills. Um, for, um... For, um... Things. Things. The, um... Because I got my meds adjusted. And I need to... Um... Uh, so yeah, I got my meds adjusted. So I need to, um... Uh, basically refill my pill pods, and I have gone on long enough about things and stuff, and... Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. I was... God damn it. I am... Ah! I'm... I'm being a stereotype right now, and I... I do not like this. I really don't. If I don't get embarrassed by this video before uploading, um... Obviously, you will see it if I don't. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I do, uh, hopefully, 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 I get the packages, um, uh, finished and packed up tonight, and, um, and I can, uh, um, yeah, hopefully I can get my get my packages um, of orders done tonight, and and then what? Oh, this this might be the fresh. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I think I'm just going to post this video so people know what I'm like about these things, because it's. I don't know. I've always got mixed feelings because some of my older videos are even are, are about as bad, if not worse, than how I am right now when I'm in them, and I just go on and on and on about nothing with no point or anything, and um, and it's kind of embarrassing to me now, like seeing myself unmedicated, and like I said, I'm technically medicated now, but. Um, I've needed my meds adjusted for some time, and because of the, uh, of the environment where I grew up with, um, not only my father, who was pretty much in AA my entire life, um, he fell off the wagon for a little under two weeks during the divorce from my mother, but that was a very stressful time, and... You know, so it's understandable, especially since my mother was a later-in-life lesbian and <laughs> uh, le left left him for uh, uh, another another retired groupie. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, and so then there was also my um, um, my older half sister on my dad's side, and I've got an older half sister on my mo on my mother's side, but. Uh, she never had an issues with addiction, much like myself. Uh, but yeah, my older half-sister on my dad's side, uh, she also had issues with, uh, drugs and alcohol since she was in about eighth grade, I want to say. And her, uh, her, her mother is, is very sweet and everything, but her mother is also a recovering, uh, drug and alcohol addict. And then there was my younger sister who died... Uh, about two years ago from a heroin overdose. Uh, and, uh, so, obviously, I <laughs> obviously, it's, it, there's, there's a presence of addicts in my family, and so I get really paranoid, because, uh, so many of my medications are classified as controlled substances, 
and because of that, and because of all of the, uh, all of the, um, the, um, the, um, the addicts in my family, especially on my dad's side, like my dad's side, uh, let's see, oh yeah, there's also my, my aunt Karen, and that is legitimately her name, it is, actually I have two aunts named Karen. The one on my mom's side, though, is a total Karen, like the kind on, you know, that people tell stories about on Reddit. Um, but yeah, my, uh, my Aunt Karen, um, on my dad's side, she's actually really cool. She and I have a, uh, relationship again. She's really cool, she's really chill, she's gonna be celebrating, uh, 20 years sober, uh, this July. And, um, and, uh, I know, I know their sister Judy. Um, has not had any history with addiction uh, herself, and I don't remember if their sister Loretta did or not, because Loretta died from uh, from uh, cancer shortly after I was born. And uh, but I know their father, their father died. My my paternal grandfather died, I, and I did look up. I did look up the records. Um, my birthday was July twenty second. His he died on July 25th, a year before I was born. So, <laughs> my father likes to say a year to the day before I was born, but uh, that that was not exactly true. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, close. It was close. Um, so yeah, there, uh, he died from acute cirrhosis of the liver, uh, which is... Um, the easiest way to get acute cirrhosis of the liver is to be an alcoholic, so, <laughs> uh, I, I believe there are other ways people can come down with that, but I do know that the most common way to get it is to be an alcoholic. So, basically, my, my paternal grandfather drank himself to death. This was the, like, literally the most Irish thing in the world, especially... And he, he got off the boat when he was 14. Um, so, uh, so, yeah. That, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, my dad's side of the family is just this a whole lot of stereotypes. We've got a lot of crazy people, a lot of alcoholics. Um, like I said, my, uh, my paternal grandfather was even from Belfast. And yes, I know, that's technically the UK. Um, but Northern Ireland is in this weird little... I don't know, it's, oh gosh, um, it's, in, in many ways, it is, oh gosh, here's the funny thing about, uh, Northern Ireland, so Northern Ireland is relatively self-governing, um, 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 compared, to, uh, it, it, it's relatively self-governing as the other parts of the UK are as well, um, they were the last to decriminalize uh, homosexuality, or, you know, decriminalize the sodomy laws, uh, and they also, like, oh, gosh, um, they were also the last to recognize, um, same-sex marriage, and, like, literally, Ireland recognized same-sex marriage before Northern Ireland did. So, um, and Northern Ireland recognized same-sex marriages long after the rest of the UK did. So, uh, so, yeah, it's like, yeah, Northern Ireland, technically the UK, well, yeah, but it's also, oh, gosh, it's, uh, I, like, if, if you're also American, um, I can, I can word the analogy as, like, you know, like, think of, like, states' rights, that, you know, and all of that, like how, um, well, see, this is why, uh, this is why, um, um, I always got on people, in especially well-meaning allies who just didn't think enough about it, about how same-sex marriage rights were actually, like, relevant to trans people, because here's the thing, is, like, there are three states in the U.S. where, uh, trans people cannot update a birth certificate, um, to reflect the gender one is living as. So, um, and since most states will look to birth certificate for marriage, you know, and whether or not one can marry, you know, before, um, same-sex marriage was made legal throughout the nation, um, so it's like, 
you know, there, there were three states. Like, if you were born in Ohio, Idaho, and I want to say the last holdover is uh, Tennessee. Kansas changed the law um, sometime in the last 15 years. I know that much. Um, so, um, so, yeah, you could have been born in... You could be a, a trans person born in any one of those three states, and until uh, until same-sex um, marriages were recognized um, throughout the um, throughout all 50 states, if you were legally married, say in Iowa, where you know was one of the earliest states to recognize um, uh, same-sex marriage, so you could be legally married in Iowa, but because of the way that the marriage laws differ between states and they don't necessarily have to recognize a marriage as legal if you move to a different state, like, you could move out of that state, say, to, I don't know, Idaho, um, and your rec marriage would not be recognized as legal, either because, A, you did not update, you know, it, like, you could be a trans couple and, you know, just taking, like, even if, even as a heterosexual pairing, like say, uh, say, uh, um, say a trans man and a uh, and a cis woman, they could be legally married in Iowa without him having to update his birth certificate or have any of the surgeries um, in, at all, and um, and it would still be you know legal. It was still legal in Iowa, but they could move say to. Idaho, where, I don't know, and say he was born in Tennessee or something, but, you know, like, one of them, they have a job that takes him to Idaho for some ungodly reason. I hear stories. I hear stories. I'm a fan of Dame Darcy. I've heard so many stories. Um, I was almost one of her, I was almost a roommate of hers, but that's, that's another story for another time. Um, so, uh, so you can move to a different state. And suddenly, your marriage would not be recognized as legal because one of you is trans, and either the state you moved to um, doesn't recognize same-sex marriage, um, or you know maybe if they do, or or um, either they explicitly don't recognize same-sex marriage, or um, and you know, or even if you were born in, say, Michigan, where you are allowed to update your birth certificate if you're a trans person. Um, um, I know in Ohio, they don't recognize amended birth certificates, because that's technically what you're doing, is you're amending the birth certificate at a later date. So it's going to be on the record that um, at this date, your birth certificate was changed to reflect this um, this, this gender. So, so yeah, Ohio doesn't recognize amended birth certificates. And, uh, there was, there was a big, there was a big case, um, uh, oh god, like, 15 years ago, roughly, thereabouts, um, where this couple, and it was a trans man and a cis woman, they moved from Rhode Island to Ohio, and they'd been married for 15 years. Like, they were, um, I know he was born in Rhode Island. I don't remember about her, but they, uh, they moved to Ohio, and suddenly, like, they'd been legally married for 15 years in Rhode Island, and suddenly their their marriage was was not recognized as valid anymore come tax season because, um, because Ohio did not recognize his amended birth certificate, meaning they were, under Ohio law, a same-sex couple, which Ohio did not recognize 15 years ago. So, uh, so yeah, that is exactly why same-sex marriage laws um, were relevant to trans people before that, you know, like, yeah, you know, especially before that uh, passed nationwide. So, uh, so, yeah, yeah, um, I know there are um, and absolutely, you know, trans people should be able to have birth certificates updated. That is, that no longer becomes irrelevant now that with same-sex marriage laws, um, recognized because, you know, um, you know, it's just, like, don't, don't say it's not relevant because of the way the whole states' rights things work, and I'm gonna clip some of this out because I have no idea what I'm going on about, but, uh, but yeah, so... I don't know. I think I am going to upload this just because 
I kind of want people to see that I guess I really did need my meds adjusted because, um, because yeah, I mean, I know I have a tendency toward, um, just getting really verbose and talking your face off over whatever, but this is how much worse it is when I'm not on a medication dosage that works right. Right, kitty? Right. Right. Mwah. Look at this kitty. This is a fluffy kitty. Look at the fluffy bottom. Yes, he's got a fluffy bottom. Alright, so, bats and kisses, dears, and I love you, and take care of yourselves, and goodbye.